It's like a lot of people think the engineers don't really do nothing at the end of the day. They just think like they're pressing buttons. <laughs> oh, oh my God, man, the shit I gotta deal with. <laughs> it's yeah. like, yo, come sit down and work your computer here. All right, YouTube. So I'm sitting here with another industry engineer. This is Colt. Um, thank you for sitting down and have this conversation with us. Um, first off, can you tell the people who you are a little bit, uh, a little bit about yourself? Yeah, for sure. My name is Colt. Um, my Instagram handle and future website is going to be called Mixed by Colt. Um, and basically, I am a audio engineer who's worked with many of your favorite artists i've been in many different studios many different rooms many different people and i've accumulated a lot of experience yeah because i noticed you had a lot of credits <laughs> i was like man he's worked yeah. with a lot of people <laughs> yeah man it's sauce i got which is uh maybe being an introvert i'm not sure <laughs> i feel like sometimes you know i'm more of a listener mm -hmm. so I more stop myself from saying dumb shit. Yeah. <laughs> There's a really good chance I won't say dumb shit. Yeah, saying um, some dumb shit can be, locker, Yeah, so. saying some dumb shit can get you kicked out of sessions a lot. How common it is for multiple engineers to um work on one song like the pro the process between engineer to engineer? Um it's pretty common. You know, usually there'll be a recording engineer, mm -hmm. they'll meet their own mixing engineer and then a mastering engineer. And then you can also call producers engineers as well. Mm -hmm. um, depends when they're involved in it. Mm -hmm. You know, if they made the beat and then sent it, and then after engineers worked on it, they might not be called. They're still an engineer, but but you know, um, there's always a few people working on the tracks. Mm -hmm. So, um, do yeah. do you think it's better for artists like that have their own home studios? Do you think it's better for them to record their music? mix their music master their music or should they involve somebody else in that process um mixing and mastering your music if you're a beast at it then mm -hmm. do it if you know it can be improved then do it otherwise you are just saying f you to your track just <laughs> you could sound better but i'm cheap and i think i know everything so i'm gonna do it yeah. Um, so it just depends where your mindset is at, how, because really the quality of the track plays an impact, yeah. you know, a huge impact. Um, yeah. So what's the differences between mixing and mastering for people that might not understand it completely? Yeah, this is the thing, like, um, I wish I could find a website where I could like send it to clients and it's just so like articulate, <laughs> Every yeah. website is like different explaining it. Mm -hmm. um, mixing is taking the individual element stems and making them enhanced and sound as best as they can. Mm -hmm. And once they're all in one audio file, mm -hmm. then that goes to mastering and mastering enhances that one audio file and makes it just polishes it over, makes it loud enough to compete with other things. Yeah. So do you think it's smart to master the song in the same session you mix the song in or should that go to a completely different session uh the way i work is i have my basic mastering chain on it mm -hmm. um, so i don't get a surprise after i mix it mm -hmm. with heavier compression um and then you know after you finish the mix then you can work on the master like that extra mm -hmm. little nuances is how I do it. Okay. Um, what are some of your go-to plugins for mixing? Pro Q3, mm -hmm. for sure. I'm a big, uh, my ears are really sensitive to like resonances, mm -hmm. just cause I've EQ'd a million hundred thousand times. <laughs> like <laughs> I, I just hear that stuff. So mm -hmm. I like to get rid of them um so pro q3 for sure uh my favorite compressor that i always have on vocals mm -hmm. is our box um it always gives that industry sound no you just gotta put it on i don't care where <laughs> you put it on yeah uh what else a little sauce is uh something i never saw i'd say but you know what screw it uh 
plugin from IK Multimedia mm -hmm. called Master Match. Mm -hmm. So basically, you take a reference song you really like mm -hmm. and plug it in. You can even highlight the part you really like, and you can take the, the frequency spectrum, mm -hmm. and then you, you put your song into the plugin, and it learns it, and it matches your frequency spectrum to the other reference song. All right. Um, and in doing that, what does does that basically kind of give you the similar like loudness of it or just sonically like s makes it s similar? Like, how does that really work? Uh, so it does two things. It raises the volume to match the loudness, which I don't really follow because mm -hmm. I look at my luffs at the meter. That's all I care about. Mm -hmm. I'll usually just turn that down and let my limiters do it. Um, but it does show where your reference song mm -hmm. frequencies bump and you can add your song frequencies to bump at the same place. Okay. Um, so, so you would recommend this would be done with mastering or within the mix? Uh, whenever you feel like putting it on. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Probably more mastering, but yeah. Okay. I was just trying to get some uh, clarity on that because I'm pretty sure um, somebody is going to go look the plugin up and try it out for themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah, do you got like one or two more? Um, Valhalla Vintage Verb, mm -hmm. Reverbs. Um, I just got uh, Gunna's mix engineer who did DS4 told me because mm -hmm. uh, I had a client who was like, I need to sound exactly like Gunna. I was like, all right. <laughs> so I'm like doing it. And I'm like, you know what? Let me ask him. He'll, he'll probably respond to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was like, all right, this is the reverb I use. And that reverb is uh, Briscosti. Briscotti? Briscotti. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Briscotti? Uh, I don't think I've heard of that plugin. It's by uh, Seventh something. Se okay, I'm going to have to look up that plugin right there. So that's, that, so that's, that's, that's the thing I'm going to have in my chain all the time now. All right, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go look that one up. <laughs> I'm definitely yeah. gonna look it up. So it's like, all right. So I'm gonna go back to something you just said. You said you was working with a client that wanted to sound like Gunner. So basically, it was more. Was it more so the reverb and probably like the effects part of it, or was they trying to mimic like a Gunner vocal tone or something like that? I'm glad you asked that because that's the fun part about dealing with clients is uh, sometimes they just say that mm -hmm. and then you try to ask them questions like you just asked and they're like, I just want to sound like Gunner, period. I'm like, all <laughs> right, I got you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I try to cop copy and mimic every everything from uh, where frequencies are boosting to mm -hmm. where, uh, you know, to the saturation I could hear to the reverb and delay and effects. I could hear. I try to mimic everything. Yeah. Yeah, because um, because like I was telling you earlier, like it's like a lot of like it's like a lot of YouTube videos that have videos like that where they're basically trying to do their impression of a gunner type song or a young thug or a baby type song. But in most cases, like a lot of those people would be rapping the similar song with the similar cadence. Um, would you say is it more so like for an artist to kind of sound like somebody is it more so imitating the vocal performance or the flows or the cadences or is it the effects that would make an artist sound like somebody I love that question I, uh, because this is a really important question mm -hmm. I'm not mimicking when you say I want to sound like Gunna uh -huh. I'm not mimicking his you know, say like you could do this better in your take that's not my job mm -hmm. My job is to match the frequencies where I hear uh, the compression, the saturation, all the effects, everything to mimic his. Like maybe, maybe uh, the hi hat compared to his vocal and the uh, upwards of five k. Mm -hmm. His vocal is lower than the hi hat upwards of five k. This much, okay. and I can hear that, and I'll a b it, and I'll go. Maybe his vocal sounds really compressed here. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a lot of science, really which I can't like put on a vocal chain. I like have to dive in mm -hmm. and zone out and just mimic it. Yeah. So, and most of the time when you're mixing, you're mixing with, um, with the trackouts, right? 
Yeah. So you're able to level the vocal a little bit with the hi hat, like you were just talking about, versus a person watching a YouTube video of a person trying to mimic or replicate it with a two track, because the two track oh. is already set in stone. Hell right? yeah, dude! You need the track outs because the the two track you don't have room to wiggle as much. With the track outs you might not even change anything if you don't need to, yeah. but you can if you want to. Yeah. which is super important yeah super like a lot of people like a lot of people aren't really um privy to the importance of the stems like i've been kind of trying to get more people to understand why you need the stems so um could you really explain why people would need the stems you need the stems because the whole song is is the most of the song is the beat mm -hmm. right and depending how the beat hits and your vocals, another part of the beat, it's a mm. song. So if you don't have all those layers, you're, you're, you're stuck with the beat that sounds, you can enhance it. You're stuck with that. Yeah. And then you have a vocal that you can enhance, but the beat still can sound like shit. Mm. So like, what are you, you got to have, be able to enhance the beat as well to, to get the best product you can. Otherwise you're wasting your time and it's just, you're wasting your time, man. What, does it mean to you when you say you make the vocals sit in the mix? Because a lot of people that's up and coming, they want the industry standard mix to where the vocals sit in the mix. So is it easier for you to do that with the stems or with the two track? I already know it's the stems, but I would want you to explain why. Yes, it's the stems because... Uh, a lot of times it's the the main uh, synth elements like the guitar or the piano. Mm -hmm. Maybe those are covering too many frequencies that your vocal is standing out. Mm -hmm. So look, if you only have the, the two track and mm -hmm. your guitar is piercing here, but your vocals are piercing there as well. I'm, yeah. This is the frequency spectrum. I'm yeah. very big cool. <laughs> and you try to EQ lower, try to turn down the guitar on that, that two track beat, you're going to turn down the hats, everything, everything in that whole beat. Mm -hmm. Then your vocal will pierce and it's not gonna sound as good whereas if you have the stems you can turn down just the guitar like this mm -hmm. and everything else can still be there but your vocal is going to cut through and sit inside the mix better yeah because it's yeah. easier for you to blend let's say you got an acoustic guitar with an electric guitar and something else that's in that little frequency pocket you can feather those a little bit more blend it create different pockets for stuff to like sit you know because a yeah. lot of people are out here confused because they don't understand the importance of the quality of file that they're mixing with too because a lot of people struggle with mixing uh understanding the quality of an mp3 is completely different from a wave um there's in, there's cases where people are recording songs in pro tools to m4a files you know so it's like text message yep. so it's like the quality of the file that you're recording with or mixing with that's gonna have a big play on the output of the song too, right? Yeah, everything matters. Think of the last radio hit you heard that was not done properly. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't name you one. <laughs> not happening, and you're just losing money at that mm -hmm. point because you're investing into the music video or your your Instagram or your whatever, mm -hmm. and the quality of your song's not there. And the billboard doesn't like not quality songs. So yeah. you're basically burning money. It doesn't make sense to me. All right. So look, I'm, I saw an ad earlier today. I want to read this to you to kind of get your um, standpoint. Because what I said earlier, you said that you you haven't went down the rabbit hole of like the YouTube vocal presets and stuff. But this is going to, I'm curious to see how you're going to respond to this ad that... <laughs> because you're you're a professional engineer all right i'm gonna point out some of these key things right here um one thing from this ad it says the big problem was that every time i saved up the, and paid one of these so-called engineers the process was always so frustrating and i was always end up with a trashy mix and i had no idea how to mix myself and i did not want to spend years learning it so that was not an option um, I realized I could never afford to make it as an artist if I had to keep paying ridiculous amounts to those money, greedy audio engineers. 
do would do would you think that audio engineers are money are like greedy when it comes to money? Well, I can't speak for every in mm-hmm. person who says they're an audio engineer as a whole. Mm-hmm. I can speak for me mm-hmm. and my experience and the rooms I've been in and the people I've learned from and the schools I went to and all the education inside here. Mm-hmm. That if you're going to the wrong engineer, that's your problem. You probably mm-hmm. should have done some more research. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you think there's a cheaper way to do it better, then you're just kidding yourself. Um, you got to invest in the real engineers. Um, which actually leads me to uh, a website I'm building right now mm-hmm. called uh, mixedbycult.com, my mm-hmm. brand. And there's going to be, it's a subscription service. Mm-hmm. So artists can subscribe to it. And the reason it's better than, you know, any of these other ones is because you're only going to get top quality. There's no like, no, no people who suck at mixing are allowed to be on it. Yeah. It's only top quality people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the prices are very reasonable. Very so, reasonable. So how I know would, a lot of artists are broke, so I, yeah. I have to bring it down. So how would people go about trying to get on your site whenever it's ready? Because I'm pretty sure it's going to be like some engineers that's looking for a place to like do business from. So like, how would they get vetted to see if they could make it on your site? DM me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm. A, I read every DM. So before we go, could you give us a little advice to upcoming engineers? Um, know what you're getting into. Uh, this is a very, very, very tough industry. Very, and uh, if you really gotta know what you're getting into, um, don't think it's like magical and stuff working with big artists or you know regular artists it can it's it's hard it's not a walk in the park yeah um like a question what do you think about um rappers that use engineering as like a backup plan that's the worst backup plan ever. <laughs> <laughs> like because a lot of people do use it as a backup plan because a lot of people be like okay I'm, i bought the um, macbook i bought the apollo i bought the microphone i bought everything i needed i didn't make it as a rapper now i can just open up a studio and take mixes and people be trying you know like do you think that's a good business model or just a good thing to do or would you say it's better like for a person that wants to engineer that is what they should like focus on and really get obsessed over with the engineering versus trying to spread itself too thin. I mean, I would say make it a hobby. Mm-hmm. Like if run the numbers, you're going to see it's not worth it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, cause like, cause one thing I do understand about the engineering thing is like, it's so many people trying to make it as an engineer so you got the next person trying to undersell the next person trying to undersell the next person i've seen people offer five dollar mixes oh yeah yeah fiber and that shit like five dollar mixes ten dollar mixes um twenty five dollar masters um like it's it's very interesting because it's it's very competitive to the point where people try to low sell just out like you know so it's very interesting because people want industry quality, industry standard quality for like the lowest amount of investment. Yeah, and if you think an industry standard person is gonna put their rate down there, mm-hmm. they're, not, they're not gonna do it because people love them. That's why people come back. Mm-hmm. So they know their value. Like, you know, um, you don't have to, to push it down so much to get people to, you know. Yeah. Because a, a lot of people think, because, I don't know, I read a lot of different comments and just see a lot of different things. Like, a lot of people think the engineers don't really do nothing at the end of the day. They just think, like, they're pressing buttons. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Man, it's shit I got to deal with. <laughs> it's yeah. like, yo, come sit down and work the computer. Here, here, take the chair. <laughs> but, but, see, most people never step foot in a studio before or had to sit in front of the console with a room full of people and you had to control the session you yeah. know so it's like like a lot of people say they're engineers until they have to sit down in front in that chair you know but a lot of people don't even have the opportunity to sit in that chair 